you folks. Well, as you can see, I've now got some stuff in the polytunnel, so it is now a workable polytunnel. Well here we are, me and Barney are in the polytunnel now. I've started putting stuff in pots now, I haven't got much in there at the moment, I've got some potatoes down the bar in there and a few different things, I'll just run you through that in a minute. But as you can see I've got plenty of space in here, I've got loads of spare buckets, uh, but what I've just decided to do today is to actually clear off my top decking because I've got loads of lawnmowers which I've got to repair and I've also got that uh, Piaggio moped still to work on, so we'll be doing that obviously in a different video. But this is just a little video showing you what we've got in the polytunnel at the moment and the work I'm doing at the top there. So let's just show you around. Right, well here we've got some uh, Charlotte potatoes I've put in here. Again, they're pretty low at the moment because they've got to be built up obviously. There's one, two, three, four, five containers of Charlottes there. Uh, these two little, um, what have we got here? That's just uh, some mixed salad leaves there. Now. <laughs> These were all out sticking out of the surface, but uh, Barney knocked it over outside. So they're just finding their way above the surface now. So he's here again, look. Come out the way, Barney. Away. Barney, away. Back, get back. I've also got some more mixed herb in that one there. They haven't come up yet. I've uh, planted some rosemary in there. Sharon brought that from um, a garden center and it was just in a small pot, so I've put it in there. We've also got some mint there as well, which is um, apparently this grows really, really quick. So I'm hoping that these are going to sort of uh, establish themselves and we can just pick and cut them as we go along. I'm going to get some different herbs along. I think these are ideal sort of containers for growing herbs in there, quite a nice size. So I will eventually get some more in a row or something, or maybe have some sort of stacking little shelf system here where I can uh, put all the herbs together in one, one batch. Now this is... Um, raspberry plant now when we when we brought this it was literally just a stick and as you can probably see there it is now started to sprout so these will eventually be planted out in the um, fruit area I've got planned but for now obviously I had to get them out of their bags what they come in so I've just put them in these pots for the moment that I think is a blueberry uh, plant which again is starting to bud and this is a gooseberry which is really just only starting to show some life right down at the very base there there's a little green shoot coming up there we've also got some rhubarb which again is just in this container for the moment but uh, that will eventually be placed outside under some wire so that the animals can't trample over it or whatever so as you can see there's plenty of space in the polytunnel loads more planting to do as I say we've got all the tomato seeds which have uh, got to go in and there's other loads and loads of other stuff I want to start growing as well so but now it's actually up and workable it's a work in progress with regards to the planting so as I say initially what I want to do is to clear this deck in so let's show you what I've been doing and how busy I've been with that so see you in a minute
Well, that's that painted. I'm gonna have a cup of tea now. And I'll show you something which I've just got through the mail. Very nice from uh, uh, one of my subscribers. Let's go have a look. Right, as you know that I'm uh, new to this gardening project at the moment, so, you know, I need all the help I can get. And I've got one subscriber who's actually sent me a parcel, as you can probably see here. Uh, I didn't know what it was. I didn't have any idea what, what could be in it. This is from um, Chris, by the way, Scottish Prepper. Uh, he sent me quite a lot of uh, things actually for me to get going. I'll just show you here. Wow, loads and loads of different seeds here. We've got some um, red pear tomatoes, some red leaf basil, some sweet basil, some uh, long beetroots. I think they're long beetroots. Long beetroots, some white gem parsnips, lettuce, rocket. Again, normal beetroots there, so I'll put them over the root vegetables. Some sweet peppers, uh, some onions, uh, some different tomatoes there, money makers. Mixed green lettuce, again cucumbers and courgettes, Black Beauty courgettes and uh, some Market Mortar 76 cucumbers. Broccoli, which we're going to eat plenty of, we're going to be eating plenty of broccoli. Uh, some carrots, which are Royal Chantonnay Freeze. And we've got these white radish, I haven't seen these before. Mulimino Earlies, so easy to grow, large radish, so we'll be giving that a go. Well, squash, there's some squash seeds there, I think. Nantes car carrots, scarlet globe radishes. Mizuna, I've never heard of that. If anyone could tell me what that is. Uh, Mizuna, is it a type of um, herb, is it? Or is it a salad leaf? I'm not too sure. That's a Mizuna. Fennel, again, something else I've never tried, but I'm, I'm quite part willing to try this. Celeriac, another vegetable I haven't tried, so again, be uh, giving that one a go. Watercress, I think we've all grown that in the past. And one of my favourite herbs is coriander. So, yes Chris, thanks very much for that. I mean, you didn't have to do that, but I mean, fantastic. It's going to give me some, um, well, Sharon. I'm trying to get Sharon into it now, growing the stuff from seed, so I'm getting her involved, because she's going to be the one uh, who's going to be using the polytunnel as well as me, so I want her to actually see what goes into it and be able to walk out there to the polytunnel and actually pick her own vegetables for whenever she needs it or her herbs. So that's a brilliant little gift that again. I didn't expect that at all, that's very nice of you Chris, and if you want to um, see how these go when I start growing them, just carry on following the channel because I will be planting some of these up in the very, very near future and getting them in the polytunnel once they've actually seeded, so looking forward to doing some of them. Now, you might remember Gary's lawnmowers which he was working on the weekend, well let's just go and take a look now and see what the decks, how he, he painted the decks basically and uh, he had to go, so let's go have a look at the decks. Well here's one of them, I'm sure you'll agree that they're totally different. I know you probably can't see them very well in here, it's a little bit dark in here, but uh, that's all again, all been lacquered now as you know, and uh, ready to go. As is this one over here. You remember seeing that one on there, you see they've got a lovely sheen on them now, but a bit dusty at the moment, but uh, don't worry about that. But as you can see, all ready to go, let's show you around the side of it, look. Again, nicely finished, it's not perfect, it don't have to be perfect, but as soon as you get that lacquer on it, it gives it a really hard wearing surface and no, no chance of any uh, bubbling up there if the uh, petrol spills on it so that's them two decks ready to go he's chose his two engines and I think he's actually prepared them he's given them a service, yes he's put new plugs in them as well and he's obviously changed the oil and um, cleaned them up a bit so there's the two engines so it's just a matter of uh, rebolting them back together yeah, he's done a good job there, as I say. They haven't got to be perfect, and I hope you can see now that just with a little bit of work and having the right uh, the right equipment, you can actually get these things looking pretty decent. And both of these lawnmowers, as I say, he's actually sold one of these, and um, he sold it for £80. That's without the person even seeing it, so that's that. We've still got the Piaggio moped here, as you know, but um, I've been a little bit busy and preoccupied with... Um, buying a new van. My other van's now gone and I've sold some other stuff as well so you remember the paint code on there as you can see, I don't think you see that it was um, colour code 422 if you remember again this is it here, this is how I buy my paint all I do is I phone up um, Fishers which is my local 
paint factors who actually deliver it to my house because there's a garage up the road plus I've got an account with them. I give them the code number and they come back and they actually make the colour up. So I didn't know the name of this colour which is Azuro Aurora for Piaggio. I just give them the code number which was code 422 and I've ordered basically 300 millilitres there and it's a metallic pearlescent sort of colour. You probably can't see it from here. But there's 300 millilitres there and that's actually how I get it supplied. Uh, it's mixed up and the dates on there as well as you can see and it's a Lecla Hydrofan which is a water based paint so I've got 300 millilitres here as you can probably see so that's how I get my paint mixed up a little dab of it on the surface there just to show you the colour when it's mixed so yeah that's how I get my paint mixed up and this should hopefully paint the whole bike bearing in mind you only sort of dust this coat on really to be honest with you so 300 millilitres is what I buy and that cost me £20 so that's, that's how I get my paint for when I do these bikes so that's how we've been getting on. So there we go. Thanks again to uh, Scottish Prepper Chris, who's given me these uh, lovely packet of store, lo loads of seeds there to, to start to propagate. Looking forward to doing them, and um, we'll be updating you obviously as we go along. I'll try and clear this decking area now, and also I'll show you the uh, lawn mowers when they actually get finished, just to show you what uh, Gary does now. Gary's never done anything again like like me before I started doing this. It's easy enough to talk. If you've, got, if you've got some spare cash and you want a little hobby that can earn you money and that can actually grow, you don't have to be an internet wizard. You can earn money locally from cash around you by doing things like this. A little bit of restoration work, a little bit of interest in creating something, a little bit of interest in making a bit of spare cash for yourself. Easily done. You haven't got to be a technical wizard. You haven't got to know everything about everything. You just need to be able to follow simple sets of instructions and before you know you do become an expert in a certain field. So my passion now, as I said to you, working from home, which I've achieved, I do that now, that's what I've done. That was my goal. When I stopped wasting my time with internet marketing sort of rubbish and following the so-called people who's, who's telling you how they, how they do it and basically that you're just following a system which is just okay on paper but in reality it's very hard to put into action. When I started doing my own thing and started realising that you basically just got to find what people want and then supply it to them. And it's best to do that in a hobby or a pastime or a venture that you're interested in so at least you've got some sort of interest because who wants to work in an avenue doing things that they don't enjoy. So I enjoy now doing practical stuff. I've been very practical all my life. Sure, I've got an online business or different online businesses where we create products and we make different products. But I've spent all my last six or so years, I've spent all my time since 2006 sitting in front of a computer and I wanted to be more mobile now and actually start doing what I enjoy doing as a pastime. I work from home and I show you what I do in the hope that you can probably get inspired. If you've ever thought that you wanted to work from home and uh, be your own boss and try to generate some sort of income from home. Just watch what I'm doing. I'm doing it now. This is what I do and this is what I've done for the past so many years. The things you see me do, the things I do show you are what goes on in my life and you could possibly do it too by watching the sort of things that I do if you've got an interest in that way. If you've got an interest in probably trying to create something online and learning how to set up a website and stuff like that and how to market products online then you might want to visit my other my other YouTube channel. So there you go, just the things that I do. Yeah, I will make a part three to this video and uh, we'll obviously show you the lawnmowers completed and I hopefully should have the old deck finished, uh, which I've obviously work, started work on at the moment. So you'll see that hopefully with a slightly different layout. I'm gonna move things around a bit up there. So yeah, there we go. Hope you enjoyed this video and speak to you in the next video. Don't forget, if you do like my videos, please rate, comment and subscribe. I do like to see your subscriptions and it also I can get out to more people if my mess if my videos are passed on if you do subscribe to other people possibly wanting to do the same thing as well because I say I'm not hiding anything I'll show you all what I do whether it be repairing bikes whether it be growing stuff in the garden now which is all new to me so you'll see my mistakes as well and also I take on board your comments as well so yeah thanks very much indeed and I'll see you in the next video